All right, Brian and I here with Cameron Haney, cornerback slash defensive back for Utah State. Tell us a little bit about kind of the chain. I mean, he came in as a cornerback. Time flies. Or, yeah. uh, it seems like yesterday he came in as a freshman and signed and committed and all that kind of stuff. And now um, kind of, kind of that, that transition and change and everything has been. Um, the change has been great. Um, I think when I first came in, I was young. And it was everything was moving very fast, so I had to get acclimated to how college work outside of football as well, so I could make sure the football sense is good. So, um, yeah, I think that's basically been it. Just basically just enjoying everything around you, and then enjoying football second, because it's life after football as well. So um, I think now I've been able to I've been able to basically mold my game after just being so into the game, so it's not just playing cornerback, it's nickel, knowing what linebackers doing, knowing what everybody else is doing. So now I can be able to move different positions, be able to excel, show everybody what I could do from a corner standpoint, safety or nickel, just be a football player. So now you yeah. feel like you kind of know all three positions back there and, and know what's going on on defense and everything? Yeah, yeah, I think that's what makes me like a valuable person on this team, just basically being able to know all three spots and not just being able to just be confined in one place. So I've been able to play corner, I've been able to play nickel, I've been able to play safety, put that all on film and try to be the best at it. So that's basically what I bring to the game. Yeah. Um, how much do you feel like um, you know that could potentially help you maybe even in the, in the NFL or – or whatever, it's, it seems like that could be beneficial. Yeah, I think basically having more tools in your toolbox, you be able to build build a house. So, you know, I just think me just playing all the three spots and be able to excel and be able to be the best and compete to be the best at any of those given spots, it give me a shot at the next level. So that's what these new coaches have been able to, you know, get that out of me in the spring ball, trying to give me a challenge. So I play corner one week, then I go, okay, now we want you to start and play safety. Let's see if you could do it. Then I show them that. So just that perseverance, just that. I like being a challenge anyway. So, you know, challenges are great. So yeah. what's your favorite position? Like if you had to choose one, what would you choose? Mm, if I had to choose one, I'd <laughs> say corner maybe. But I like nickel as well because, cause, you know, that's more well-rounded. Like I like garden slots and stuff like that. So I want to guard basically the most flashy people on the field, and that's like the slots and stuff. So, and then plus you could run, you could you could blitz corner. You really like in the box most of the time, or you always on the island. I mean, I like being on the island, but I would say nickel, nickel would be my favorite. Yeah, what uh, what have you seen so far? I mean, we haven't even started fall camp, but what have you seen from some of those other defensive backs that? Uh, because that's, that's kind of been a hot topic right now with yeah. you guys leaving, graduating, some different things going on, right? Yeah, I think, like, we built over the years, like, the DVs, whether it be the safeties or the corners or the nickels, have always been, like, that strong suit of Utah State defense. Of course, it's been the linebackers, but the majority of the plays during the game situations, like, dire situations that we needed to be made, it always been a DB. So, like... um, I think, like, now it's a lot of turmoil, so to say, outside of Utah State football instead of in the team. So everybody's, like, wondering, like, all these people leaving, injuries. I don't think we'll miss a step. I don't think we'll miss a step because over the past years we had injuries. We had people go down. I don't think we, we've ever missed a step. We always were in that top ten in the categories when it comes to being defensive back. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. But as far as, like, Corners that are flashing, uh, I say Zahadri, Zahadri Jackson. He's on the uprise right now. Jared Green, he's very smart. I like his smartness, his capabilities at the line. He'll be good for us as well. Troy at safety, he's a good, aggressive, downhill safety. That's what we need. And Shaq, of course, we all know what Shaq could do. He gave us flashes before he got his injury. And you got cash, a transfer, Juco transfer. So everybody around us basically got – like, we have all the tools. We're just going to put it together in this camp, and we won't miss a step. Yeah. Is there still 
some things kind of up in the air with like Jamar Singram and that kind of thing, or do you know what anything about um, that? Yeah, like I don't really know too much about that, but I just know that wherever he's at, he's obviously has a plan, but we can't really you know, stick on what Jamarcus Ingram is going to do. We got Wake Forest right now. That's my close friend. So, like, he's a strong individual. So, he won't he won't miss a step in wherever he's going. But we got a place where we got to go anyway. So, best of luck to him. That's what I got to say about that. Talk about what was the move to safety um, about the last two weeks of spring ball. Was that a surprise? Was that? something that was kind of planned and you know once you talked about that um how, how did you feel about it like you know uh, how did you feel your last two weeks went in safety um well last season towards the end of the season we had like some safeties that were down like mm-hmm. Shaq and then I believe they had to move and we had to bake we had to basically change our defense because once we lost Shaq then it was like two other safeties so it was Gage and Aaron Wade so when I was, when I moved to corner because Deontay Fortenberry got injured, so I moved to corner. Then we played Boise that week. They was like, okay, we need you to play safety, based on your abilities. We think and your smartness. Like they basically know that. Okay, I won't miss a step. So that's when I really had to like go home and think about like, okay, like I just told them yeah, but like really in my head I wasn't ready. So then I just went out there in Boise, and then I just ran my keys or whatever. But it would be like on third down packages. So then I was just like, okay, cool. This is a good challenge. And then coming into spring, I was at corner, and I was starting. I was playing corner. Everything was good for the first week. But then they were like, okay, let's see you at safety. That's what um, I had a meeting with my head coach. He basically said the way I moved or whatever, um, that will be good for the next level, and let's just see how you move. If you don't like it, then you can leave. So the first week, it was good. I mean, I was moving very good at safety, I believe. And – yeah, it was just a good transition. Like, it just, yeah. like, it was the same as corner as nickel to me. I mean, some people probably see that as a challenge, but I just take every mental approach. I just take it, like, and I see it as a challenge. I just work on it every day. So that's pretty well, much it. You just mentioned mental approach. Take our listeners inside your head and kind of let them get a feel for what you're looking for when you're on the field. You know, what are you keying on? What are you looking for as a quarterback? Um, well, what I always look for, I always look in the fourth quarter film first, and I look at whatever their plays was, whether it be if they were trying to win the game or if they were down or if they were up in the game. So I just look at how the, the wideout tendencies are. The number one wideout, is he still aggressive? Will he get up off a of press? Like, however he deals with certain aggressions, or however, like their team and their offense acts under pressure. So I go, I go at those um, plays first before I watch the whole game. So I just figure out who's their best player. Then I look at okay, now I'm about to look at him under these pressure situations. So third and ten, let me see how he moves. Let me see if he wants to catch the ball. Is he shying away from it or whatever? And let me see what the quarterback does. Do they have their own cadence them and, and other things like that of that nature? So. That's what I basically do to go over my mental approach because I want to see how are they going to act under those dire pressure situations where they fold or where they stay strong. So that's how I really take it like that. A lot of people probably just watch like the whole game or whatever, but I don't really watch the whole game because I know pretty much know what they're going to do. I want to know like, okay, who are they relying on when it, when the game is on the line? How does this wide out move, whether it be wide out, tight end, or running back? So I just look at the whole thing like that. And I pay attention to the quarterback as well. So pretty much the quarterback, the main wideouts, well, maybe two, like two wideouts and then the running back. That's it. That's pretty much what I read. It's just those pressure situations, like those mental moments or whatever, whatever it may be. So that's what I look at. So um, looking back at last year, the, the defense was a was a – Big play defense. Obviously, the offense made a lot of big plays, a lot of yeah. short, you know, uh, scoring uh, drives and different things like that. What's what do you expect from the defense this year? Do you, do you feel like um, there will be that that big play capability again this year? Or? Yeah, 
I think our defensive scheme last year was pretty much different now. But I think now this defense allows us to run run around more. Last year was pretty much a base. Everybody knew we were pretty much in base. But now we added a nickel, which we haven't had since 2017 when we were under Miley and Shaver. So now we're pretty much adding a nickel. So the passing game, I think it will be more flashes out the passing game as well. We do a lot of man and stuff. So it should be good. I mean, we just trying to be the best team we could be this year. So last year, even like last year, it was good. Like it was great. Like that was a great defense. But now we just moving on, trying to develop like our new culture or whatever. And then we'll we'll go from there. But we always end up in that category. So that won't be a hard a hard thing to do. So we'll be fine. Probably more man to man on the outside though. Yeah, yeah, it'll be way more man to man. It's way more man to man now than last year. Last year we were just pretty much base. So now we're man to man, we get in your face. And yeah, it's just more of a ground and pound defense this year. Okay. Talk about any personal goals that you set moving into your senior year this year. Um, I set a lot of personal goals. But my main one would would be I want to be the best, most versatile defensive back in this school, in this country, and in this conference. So that's basically what I'm aiming for. I really want to be a football player. So whether it be safety, nickel, corner, I really want to be that man. <clears throat> and during this camp, I'm really going to harp in on learning, like literally learning everything there is to safety, nickel, and corner. So Wherever I be in game time, like, I want to switch out from, like, say, first down, I'm at corner. Okay, then third down, you might see me at safety. But I would never miss a miss a step, you get what I'm saying? So I want to be great. So I want to take the hardest challenges and make it look like it's easy. So that's that's my number one goal. And second is I also want to mount with championship. Well, those are both the first ones. That's going to come as well. One so. A, one B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One A, one B. So one A, one B. So I want to be the most versatile defensive back in America. So that's what I want to come. That's what I want to come with this year. So yeah, I'm sure everybody what I can do. Again, going into your senior year, um, tell our listeners why you chose Utah State coming out of high school. Mm, I chose Utah State because um, their defense fit fit what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be. I feel like not a lot of people know us like okay, let's put it like this, okay. Nobody really knew who Utah State was until the end of the season. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like the end of the season you see the statistics coming out then you see, well, okay, now, wow, they have all these interceptions. Wow, like who are, like who is this person? So that's basically what well, my identity was in high school, coming out of all-boys school, you didn't really much hear about us until the end of the season. Then you see all these accolades and you see all these awards that they were achieving. So that pretty much matched what I wanted. And plus, I went to a Utah State game in 2013, and I'd never seen the defense play like that before. So I always told myself that if when I start, like when my recruitment starts to build, then I want to get that Utah State offense. I mean, that Utah State off, offer, excuse me, Utah State offer, and I just want to come here. And then I was under Jalen Davis. So he was my my um, recruiting. Um, he was my host on my visit. Right. So mm-hmm. once I made that connection with him, I kind of knew, like, okay, now I see he has, like, these accolades. So I want to basically mimic that. So I've been under his wing until he left. So that's pretty much the reason why I came here. Very good. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Tim. Thanks.